You're listening to Arirang Radio's Wonders of Jeju. This is a segment where we tell you about the lives of people living right here on the island. I'm your host, DJ Jamie. This is Humans of Jeju. Hello and welcome into the studio, Jay. Hi, Jamie. Hi. You're looking very cute today with your cap and everything. Thank you. I'm so happy that you're here and I cannot wait for um, you to introduce our human today. Really happy to be here. I know you... Okay, <laughs> okay what's that about? All right. Okay, I'm not going to go into details because uh, I know so we happy. have a lot to mm. deal with today. Yeah. So let's just dive into it. Yeah, so today's interview was quite long. Mm-hmm. So why don't we, you know, start right in and listen to today's human of Jeju. Sounds good. 안녕하세요. 저는 현일련이라고 하고요. 지금 제주 남원 신흥리 이 마을에서 지금 요가원을 운영하고 있습니다. 요가원이라고 하기에는 거창하고요. 그냥 자그마한 수련장, 예, 비움 요가 아시람이라고 제주도 옛날 고택이죠. 고택에서 이제 소소하게 시작을 해서 지금 4년차 운영을 하고 있어요. 연길에서 태어났고 대학교까지 이제 중국에서 살다가 대학교 졸업하고 이제 취직을 하면서 한국 관련된 일을 많이 했었어요. 그러다가 제가 마지막에 취직한 건 이제 부산에 있는 그 임플란트 회사였는데 거기를 취직하면서 이제 본사 발령돼가지고 부산에서도 한 1년 살다가 마지막에 이제 베이징에서 일을 하다가 그때는 너무 환경적으로도 안 좋았고 그러니까 그 공기 자체가 너무 안 좋아서 그리고 일도 제가 거의 한 20일 정도는 거의 출장을 가 있었어요. 그러니까 계속 그냥 그냥 공중에 떠 있는 느낌 그렇게 살다 보니까 너무 몸이 망가져 있고 너무 이제 영원히 맨말라 있었죠. 그래서 이제 그때 내가 회사 그만두면서 부모님은 안산에 계세요. 그래가지고 부모님 댁에 좀 머물러야겠다 해가지고 왔다가 부모님하고 있는 것도 너무 또 힘들어서 그래서 이제 제주도 이주를 했죠. Mm. Please explain our new guest today. So today we introduce an owner of Yoga Academy in Shinungli village of Namon area mm-hmm. in Sogipo. And her name is Hyun Il Yeon. Mm-hmm. Uh, the academy was transformed from an old Jeju house. Okay. So she mentioned it's more like a small yoga training center. Mm-hmm. And it has been four years now that they've been operating. Mm. Uh, today's human of Jeju, Hyun Il Yeon, was born in Yanji mm-hmm. city in China. And she lived there until she graduated college. And and then after that, she did work related to, like, Korea. Oh. So she went back and forth from China to Korea, living in Busan for a year and then in Beijing. But living a life traveling back and forth, she felt like her life was kind of floating in air. Oh, I know that feeling. Yeah, <laughs> and she began to affect her health. So she quit her job and moved into her parents' house in Ansan, mm-hmm. where she stayed for a moment. Until she decided to move to Jeju Island. Oh, I see. Well, it sounds like before moving to Jeju, she was really worn out from work and needed a place to heal. Um, So she's running a yoga academy. Uh, What's this place like? So the house actually feels like if you're visiting your grandparents' house in a very old village. Ah, I see. Around the house is surrounded by tangerine farms. So Mm -hmm. the place has a very private feeling. Mm -hmm. And also you can feel the energy from the nature as well. Mm. So even within the village, they're actually located very deep in the village where they're really inside like the farms Mm -hmm. and away from the streets and the houses. Mm. So not being bothered is a great place to train your body and mind, uh, listening to the sound of the wind, birds and also feeling the nature as well. Just hearing about it is healing. So when did uh, our guest Hyun Il Yeon get started with yoga? So she mentioned before she spent some time working as a staff of guest houses. Oh. So and she did this for about five years. Uh-huh. And in between while traveling to Bali and India was how she got in touch with yoga. <gasps> really? Yes. So before coming to Jeju, she said she was actually just an ordinary career woman. Oh, really? Okay, then what brought her down to Jeju Island? So she mentioned during her last career, which she worked for more than seven years, mm-hmm. her mind and body had 
just got so tired and mm. she couldn't see that her work had any visions for her. And she started to feel that she had not been living her life thinking about herself. Mm. So with all that stress piled up in her, um, one morning she said she just had to quit her job. Mm. And having someone she knows in Jeju, she was actually invited to come and visit. Oh, how nice. So at first, she decided to visit Jeju for just a week. I think a lot of people can relate to this story. What did she like so much about Jeju that made her stay here though? So let's listen first to what she liked about Jeju. 그때 그 게스트하우스가 굉장히 좀 약간 히피스럽기도 하고 약간 티베풍 뭐 인도풍이었어요. 되게 좀 자연적이었고 그래서 그 속에서 사는 사람들 보니까 너무 근심 걱정이 없이 그냥 막 우리가 도시에서 그렇게 열심히 사는 모습이랑 다르게 그냥 되게 여유 있게 살고 있더라고요. 그래서 그때 좀아 이렇게 살아도 되는구나라는 약간 좀 그런 충격이 왔었고. 그래서 아 나도 좀 이렇게 쉬고 싶다라는 생각이 들더라고요. 그래서 그렇게 해서 그냥 마음 먹고 스텝으로 이제 한 달도 안 돼서 다시 올라갔다가 다시 내려와서 이제 쭉 살게 된 거죠. Mm, can you explain what she says? So she said the guest house that she stayed at at the time had kind of a hippie style mm. vibe as well as a Tibet and India type style of look mm -hmm. and everything was just natural. Mm. Uh, the people living there seemed to live with like no n worries mm. and unlike the life in the city, the life seemed to be filled with uh, leisure. I see. So that was when she realized that people actually can and it's okay to live in such ways uh -huh. and she wanted to experience that type of life as well. I see. So making up her mind to do so, she worked as a staff of the guest house for a month and when she went back up to the mainland, uh, she just came back to Jeju Island to finally settle down. Oh, here. I see. Wow. Um, Jamin says uh, yoga makes healthy lifestyle. <laughs> yes. Yes, that is so true. If you are in Jeju, 88.7 in Jeju City, 88.1 in Seogipu City, 101.9 in the Daejeong area. Today we're introducing Hyun Il Young, who is running a yoga academy in the village called Shinungni of Jeju, um, and the place is called Pium Yoga Ashiram. So she mentioned working as a guest house staff for five years, and that was when she got in touch with yoga. So uh, Jay, can you tell us more about her time then? Yeah. So for the first year of working as a staff of a guest house, in the first month, she said she really enjoyed it mm -hmm. so much that being in the nature as well. But after that month mm. and after it, she became uh, worried about her future hmm. and what she had to do for a living. I see. So even though it was nice being able to live in a wonderful nature, at the same time, she was not able to just enjoy it because ah. of the concerns and worries that was on her mind. Mm -hmm. uh, then while leaving with those concerns, the owner of the guest house recommended her about going on a travel of her own. Oh, okay. So that was how she went on a travel to Bali Ooh. and first came in touch with yoga. Uh -huh. And also with the people she met there, she went on a travel to India where she participated in a retreat program oh, yeah. in Buddhism psychology. Ooh. And from there, she kind of decided to study and learn about the mind and the soul. Oh, I see. So deciding to learn about the mind and the soul to understand and realize why she was going through such struggles in life. Mm -hmm. And that was when and how she met her current yoga instructor, oh. who she mentioned is... Uh, he's an Indian, mm -hmm. but speaks Korean very well, <gasps> really? as he was a professor in Wongwang University. Oh, wow. <laughs> and he was professor there for about five years. Uh -huh. And through him, she learned more about yoga and studied to become an instructor herself. Oh, that is awesome. The people you meet. Well, what do you learn in studying the mind and soul? Can you ask? Can I ask you that question? Yeah, so in uh, in abroad, she mentioned it's a bit like spiritual training and learning about the spiritual life. Mm -hmm. uh, but in fact, she says this is the study of our origin, basically. Ah. So she said, in order for me to know who I'm, who I really am, mm -hmm. I have to begin by asking myself, who am I? I see. Uh, but if we only consider about our names, that's not the 
that's not really who we are mm-hmm. because we can change our name anytime, mm-hmm. but our existence stays just the way it is. So the study is about questioning the ultimate question of what is inside me that is moving me mm-hmm. than just looking at the outside appearance. Mm. So it's like a journey of finding your true self. Mm-hmm. And she likes to call it way to self. Way to self. Mm. I like the, the how that sounds. Then what is the first step in finding your true self? I really need this too. <laughs> <laughs> is it through yoga? So let's listen first to what she said. So I don't think it's yoga. yoga I need to a little bit of yoga. 그냥 육체적인 막 움직임만 하는 요가원은 물론 육체적인 도움도 되겠지만 이게 육체적으로는 가장 기본이에요. 그러니까 일 단계라고 보시면 돼요. 그러니까 육체에서 이제 점점점 내이 에너지 상태, 그다음 마음 상태, 그다음 이게 더 미묘한 이제 그런 내 의식 상태까지 이제 발전을 해야 되기 때문에 그런 거를 좀 깊이 알고 있는 선생님한테서 잘 배우는 게 중요해. 근데 일단은 그냥 뭐든지 뭐 내가 좋아하는 거. 근데 뭐 저는 이렇게 예술가들도 보면 자기가 좋아하는 어떤 영역에서 굉장히 전문가가 돼 있잖아요. 완전히 몰입해 있잖아요. 그것도 난 하나의 요가라고 생각해. 왜냐면 거기에서 그 본인이 굉장히 많은 창작물 이게 창작을 하잖아요. 영감을 받고. 그러니까 우리가 사람도 다 사실은 이게 창작을 해내는 거라서 내가 오늘 하루하루를 이렇게 새로운 생각으로 뭔가 이렇게 좀 창의적으로 잘 살아내는 거. 그러니까 저는 수업 하나 하나를 그냥 내게 창작물이라고 생각해요. Oh, I like what she says. Mm. Please tell us. So the way she thinks about it for her first is yoga. Mm-hmm. Um, some yoga academies focus on only the physical part of the yoga, mm-hmm. and of course. That can be helpful as well. But with the physical being the basic and the first step, it has to go to the next next steps, which are like the energy stage. You get through this all this physical activities mm-hmm. and then the mind stage and moving deeper into the consciousness stage. Mm. And it is important to find a teacher who understands this. Ah. But mostly also she thinks it's important to know that what you like and Mm -hmm. if you look at artists who do and become professionals in the fields that they like Mm -hmm. uh, they use their focuses to create their artwork that's right and she thinks creating something is a type of yoga as well oh and that you look in yourself and find inspiration for the work Mm -hmm. so for her the classes that she instructs day to day uh, she thinks them as of creation of her own oh I see. Wow. That I can really relate to what she's saying. I really hear you. So it was through her travel that she was able to find her new career. Um, but how much influence did her travel have on her decision? I'm really curious to know, especially in terms mm. of her new career. So she mentioned that unconsciously, uh, she got the feeling that she has to do yoga for the rest of her life. Mm-hmm. And that was when she felt what yoga really is. Ah. Uh, she learned from a Tibet monk, mm-hmm. and at the time she didn't even understand English, but mm. she still try, uh, tried and opened her mind, and she said something like, something struck, uh, like strong had struck her. Oh. And she was able to meditate as well. Oh, interesting. So before that, she said, you know, she tried meditating, but the mm-hmm. posture was uncomfortable and it was really hard to concentrate. Mm. But after learning yoga from her instructor, it became comfortable and she could feel the peace. Uh huh. And she said it was like experiencing a whole new world Ooh. for her. And and now she's here on Jeju Island. So mm. if you're curious to know about this, all you need to do is look for her. So experiencing a new world through yoga, what does she mention the feeling is like? So through yoga, she realized that we have to use our body in a rightful way. Mm-hmm. Uh, when she tried to meditate on her own, she mentioned she tried many different postures, but it all didn't work. Mm. And it was really hard to concentrate. I see. But after doing yoga and like training on breathing as well, she says she felt things getting peaceful mm-hmm. and comfortable and she could feel her mind being emptied with oh. thoughts and was able to enjoy the feeling as well. I see. So when she uh so when many think about yoga they have this image that 
it, it's something you have to be very flexible and you have to be able to make all these kinds of postures. Mm -hmm. But really, the ultimate goal of yoga is to meditate. And it is about being able to a attain a, a state of self selflessness. Uh -huh. So to put it simple, it's about being able to separate yourself from the thoughts around you mm. and being able to focus on yourself. Ooh, sounds uh, like something I would love to do, and I'm pretty sure our camellias feel the same way. Are you ready? Every day is K-pop. Listen up. Anytime and everywhere. Radio. Arirang Radio. So, you know, before she came to realize uh, this new world of yoga, she must have been living in a very different lifestyle. I'm curious. Yeah, so the biggest difference in her, uh, she mentioned, is the change in how she viewed things. Mm. Uh, if before she was more focused on the outside view mm -hmm. and how she, how she was being viewed from the outside, now she views from within her oh. and look from the inside. Ooh. So in the past, when she felt like she was always struggling, she realized that she was searching for happiness and satisfaction from the outside, mm -hmm. such as from people around her mm. or from objects. And it was about the relationship she had with people. Mm. It was about the things that she had to own. And it was about having to be uh, promoted to even earn more money. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was never possible for her to be happy and satisfied. She yeah, felt. it continues. Mm -hmm. But realizing all that and that happiness can't be found from the outside, she now finds those on her own mm -hmm. and inside her in order to bring out that happiness. That is so true. And you know, there's, there's a lot of people who say this, but you have to love yourself first. Mm. So then what is a way we can find happiness within ourselves? Would mm. you be able to share that? Yeah, and let's listen to what she said. So what a coincidence we're talking about energy today mm. it's kind of our kind of our opening oh yeah but um please tell us what she says yes so the first thing is that she said you have to slowly begin to train yourself mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be yoga but you have to find the movement that is right for you mm -hmm. like such as walking as well mm -hmm. uh, a walk can be good as if as it helps you to get rid of things uh, that is in your mind mm -hmm. so moving your body and being with the nature uh, itself can be healing i see so she mentioned moving is important as movement is something that distinguishes the living from the dead mm -hmm. Uh, in order to keep ourselves lively, uh, we have to make movements and yoga through the various postures that it creates this help to bring uh -huh. out that energy within yourself and keep your life balanced. Oh, it sounds like something we all need to do, like totally. Um, so I'm very curious. I want to learn more about her. I'm sure our camellias want to as well. So here's my next question for you, Jay. Did mm -hmm. she uh, have like a message that she wanted to share for our listeners? And she did. So why don't we listen first? 그냥 저는 좀 사람들이 요즘에는 너무 이제 그 바쁘게 살잖아요. 그 바쁘게 사는 거에서 조금만 자신을 위해서 살았으면 좋겠어요. 진짜로 자신을 위해서 나를 위한 시간 이렇게 좀 충전 그게 충전의 시간이거든요. 사실은. 음. 그래서 그게 뭐 요가가 됐던 아니면 뭐. 자전거를 타던 뭐 산책을 하던 이렇게 좀그 어느 정도는 자신에게 할애하는 시간이 좀 필요하지 않나 
그래야지 좀 자신을 돌아보고 나에 대해서 좀더 생각해보고 이렇게 반초해보는 시간이 좀더 많은 것 같고 그리고 먹는 음식도 좀 되게 굉장히 중요하거든요 먹는 음식도 좀좀더 건강하게 너무 요즘에는 막 배달 음식 짜고 밉고 막 이런 음식 그 이런 음식들이 사실은 더 화를 이렇게 좀성막더막 막 이렇게 성급하게 만들고 생각도 더 많아지게 만드는 음식들이어서 좀더내 몸에 좋은 음식들을 좀 먹고 좀좀더 나를 이렇게 돌보는 그런 시간이 좀더 필요한 것 같아. Mm. So Jay, please first explain. So she knows that people today live a very busy life, mm-hmm. uh, but even in that busy life, she hopes people can make time to live for themselves. Oh, yeah. She hopes that people can make time, even a small amount of time for themselves and take time to rejuvenate. Mm-hmm. Uh, it can be yoga, but also you can ride bicycle or even go on a walk. Mm-hmm. And you should devote time for yourself so that you have time to think about yourself. Mm. And also she mentioned that food is very important as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, she advised people to eat healthier. and try to stay away from delivery foods, mm-hmm. which tend to be salty and spicy as foods affect your body and mind. Right. And think more about caring about oneself. You know, I think it's really uh, interesting the way, I, I love the way and the fact that even though she's talking about yoga, mm. she's not only talking about yoga. I right, mean, right, it's, it's yeah. like all, every kind of movement that anybody can do mm. to her, it's kind of a certain yoga in the fact that you are able to sit with yourself. And uh, I just, this comment actually caught my eye and it was about mindfulness. It was Irina who said, have you guys ever heard of mindfulness? It's the art of being, like not doing anything, but just being what you are. Mm. Hard to explain. Exactly, Irina. Mm. And I think... What our, um, our human today, Hyun Il Yeon, is saying is kind of similar to what I understand of mindfulness. Right. And so I love the fact that she's saying you can also ride a bicycle and that's mm. kind of a yoga. Or you can just do whatever it is that you do, like walking. So yeah, to me, that really kind of makes it uh, more easier to connect to. So um, this question is the question we always like to ask uh, our humans mm-hmm. as you introduce them. But where does uh, Hyun Il Yeon recommend to our listeners to visit on their trip to Jeju Island? And let's first listen to where she recommended. 저기 남원 큰홍 거기 산책길 여기 신흥리는 특별히 뭐 이렇게 아 여기 겨울에는 이제 동백 마을 해가지고 동백 보는 포스가 있고. 이 근처에는 뭐 특별한 게 없어요. 근데 저는 이제 숲길을 좋아해서 여기 이제 서귀포 쪽에는 뭐 머채와 숲길이나 이런 숲길이 좀 좋죠. 그리고 저기 가시리 쪽에 이제 오름 같은데 가을에는 이제 뭐 따라비나 큰 사슴 오름 이런 데 이제 억새가 예쁘니까 그런 데도 좋고. 외국인들은 어 저는 그냥 제주는 너무 이 고짜월이나 이런 게 너무 스페셜 하잖아요, 왜. 그래서 숲길, 숲길 같은데, 고짜월 이런 숲 같은 데를 추천해요. 트레킹 그냥 걷고 산책하고. 어, 저는 좀 그냥 괜찮은 데는 저기 교례자일 회원님, 그 다음에 여기 사련이 숲길 옆에, 사련 숲길은 너무 관광객들이 많고, 거기 붉은 오름이라고 있어요. 바로 옆에. 거기도 좋아요. Wow, she has a long list of places. Mm -hmm. Please tell us all, all of them. So, two places around Shinungli village she recommends is the Kunung coastline. Uh Uh, And since the village is also known as the Camellia village, she recommends visiting in the winter to see the Camellia courses. Uh There's a lot of trails that you can see the Camellia flowers. Mm -hmm. Uh, Also, since she likes to walk the forest trails, she recommends the Mochewat Forest Trail Uh in Namon area. Okay. And in fall, visiting the Tarabi or Kunsasu. Kun Sasum Orum, where the silver grasses are beautiful to oh, see. Oh, beautiful. This uh, is the time to go then. Yeah, it is. It's yeah. the right time to go okay, right now. And right now. especially for our foreign listeners, she thinks that Kochawar mm. is a very special part of Jeju Island. Mm-hmm. And that's why she likes to recommend tracking the forest and Kochawar trails mm-hmm. around the island, such as the Kyore Jayan Huyang Nim, the Kyore. 
recreational forest. And also the Saryani Forest and p u l g u n o r u m Right. And I remember her saying that Saryani Forest is also beautiful, but because so many people go there, like tourists, mm. that uh, she recommends p u l g u n o r u m kind of to the side of Saryani Forest. I've never been to p u l g u n o r u m I think that would be lovely to go. And um, yeah, that's really awesome. Thank you so much for introducing yet another great human of Jeju. It's just so amazing how many amazing people live here every time. It is. Yeah. Um, All right. Well, go get something to eat and we'll see you <laughs> again next week, Jay. Thank you, Jay. Thank you so Thank you. much. Well, I hope you enjoyed that segment. If you're curious to find out more about Jeju, We encourage you to go check out our website at arirangradio.com forward slash Wonders of Jeju. Or you can check out our Facebook page at Wonders of Jeju as well as our Instagram page at Wonders of Jeju. We're going to take you on a journey to learn more about what's happening here on the island.